Forerunner Chronicles. Today on July 7th, 2009, the day which will go down in the annals of history as the day when the whole world mourned the death of the late, great Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, whom our generation did dub as the King of Pop. Well, on this day, while the majority of the world has been so preoccupied with the funeral of Michael Jackson and what his family is doing and the amount of mega stars that showed up for the funeral of Michael Jackson while all of these Michael Jackson events have been swirling about just blanketing the media on the other side of the world Pope Benedict the 16th Pope Benedict the 16th the man that bears the title that the Bible dubs in the book of Daniel chapter 11 and verse 40 as the king of the north. This man on the eve just prior to the most important G8 summit that this earth will ever see transpire in its existence. On this day, just three days prior to the meeting of the president of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama with Pope Benedict the 16th on this day, July 7th, 2009, while the majority of you have been so caught up with the viewing of the casket of a dead man, Pope Benedict the 16th issued an encyclical letter, which is the most authoritative document that a pope can issue, in which he is calling for the governments of this world to establish a world political authority. Did you hear what I just told you? Today, on July 7th, 2009, Pope Benedict XVI has called for the governments of our world to establish a world political authority. If you're not clear as of yet what I'm talking about, what I'm telling you is that Pope Benedict XVI in his encyclical letter is calling for the governments of our world to establish a global authoritative body. What we are talking about is none other than the Pope calling for the establishment of a new world order. And all of this is transpiring while you're consumed in viewing the funeral of a dead man. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most momentous prophetic event that has transpired probably in our time and you've been caught up in the casket of Michael Jackson. But don't take my words for it. Take the words of this little known of Reuters article to heart. In a Reuters article published July 7th, 2009 entitled Pope Calls for World Political Authority it states that Pope Benedict called on Tuesday for a world political authority to manage the global economy and for more government regulation of national economies to pull the world out of the current crisis and avoid a repeat. The Pope's call for a rethink of the way the world economy is run came in new encyclical which touched on a number of social issues but whose main connected thread was how the current crisis has affected both rich and poor nations. An encyclical is the highest form of papal writing and gives the clearest indication to the world's 1.1 billion Catholics and to non-Catholics of what the Pope and the Vatican think about specific social and moral issues. Benedict said there is an urgent need of a true world political authority. Obviously, it would have to have the authority to ensure compliance with its decisions from all parties and also with the coordinated measures adopted in various international forums, he said. The United Nations economic institutions and international finance all had to be reformed even in the midst of a global recession, he said in the encyclical, a booklet of 141 pages. He said the current economic crisis was clear proof 
of pernicious effects of sin in the economy. In a similar article entitled Pope Calls for God-Centered Global Economy, published by USA Today, we read, the encyclical also echoes Benedict's many speeches, saying that to reach a sound global economy, every responsibility and commitment must be rooted in the values of Christian truth. Without that, he says, there is no social conscience and responsibility. Neither, he says, are mere good sentiments enough. Human progress requires God, and today's choices concern nothing less than the destiny of man. Notice that the Pope did not merely mention that this geopolitical governing body that he is looking to come into place by the governments of this world would be surely of a civil nature. He specifically mentioned in the USA Today article that God must be at the helm of this new global infrastructure, this new geopolitical governing body. He specifically said in the USA Today article that Christian truth must guide this new global infrastructure because the mere good sentiments of men is not good enough. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pope is calling for the union of church and state to take place in a geopolitical governing body, the New World Order. Notice that in the Reuters article, he made specific mention of the United Nations. This is because the Pope, along with his satanic lackeys, are looking to the United Nations to be the hub, to be the home of the new world order. Once again, this is directly in line with the sentiments of Bible scripture. In the book of Revelation, chapter 17 and verse 13, God already told us that these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These have one mind is speaking of the United Nations giving the moral authority over to the papacy to rule over the consciences of humanity. We are right now just moments away from the fomentation of a new world order finding its seat in New York City at the United Nations. And what happens after that? The Bible tells us clearly what happens after that. In the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 15, the Bible says, And he had power, speaking of the United States of America, to give life unto the image of the beast, speaking of the union of church and state in America, that the image of the beast should both speak, meaning that the government will give the authority to the religious bodies of our country to make civil legislation and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. 